Hi everyone, it's Nicole Spore and welcome back to my channel. A couple weeks ago, I shared a card with the Mama Elephant Mammoth, Mammoth Love stamp set, and I had a request to share the coloring of the Woolly Mammoths in real time. I so often speed up the video, and I know it sometimes um, can be hard to catch all of the coloring, and because this is a little bit different technique than what I normally probably share, this has lots of texture because we're using like the feathering or kind of flicking type of technique, I decided to go ahead and just do a video that only features the coloring. Now I called this a quick tip video, but it probably really isn't. Um, I, it's almost as long as a normal video, but the coloring does take a little bit longer. And since the request was for a card that I had done no line coloring, I wanted to do something similar here, plus do um, one of those images from the stamp set. I just picked a different one than what I used on that last card. And so it does take a little bit of time. I am starting with my darkest ink colors. I'm using E57 and E, pardon me, E47 and E49, and kind of just tracing out a section of the woolly mammoth, kind of outlining, if you will, but also that's going to be where my deepest, darkest part of the image is to add that definition in. So I'm really kind of being careful here with my, my outline, I guess, if you will. And I like to work in smaller areas at a time and then I'll build out from there. So I'm doing kind of the more of the body portion of this mammoth image. Then we'll color the head and finally finish with the baby up on top. So I know that this is going to be kind of a long video. I don't normally add music. I guess if you guys would rather if I do any more of these coloring videos, if I would add music instead, I can. I'm probably going to talk throughout this one if that is okay. Um, again, let me know if you'd prefer that I would do some music um, or whatever in future videos. I cannot promise that I will always do a quick tip video for everything that is requested, but because this particular technique um, is a little bit more detailed and so many have asked for it um, over many videos, not just this one, but this last request just got me thinking. I've been wanting to do some more of these kinds of videos where I just kind of showcase a certain technique instead of the entire card. I will mostly still be doing just the entire card videos, but I do want to sprinkle some of these in here and there where I can. This is the feathering. So I'm very, very lightly just taking the tip of my marker and kind of coloring in these little brush strokes. You can see I'm not completely shading in that area. That was with E44. E47 and E49 were my outer colors. I'm just going back in with a little bit deeper, darker. And then I'm using E43 as the lightest color. So I'm not completely coloring that in. This is the E43. Just kind of adding in little brush strokes to mimic fur. The great thing about Copic markers is you can always go back over if you feel like you've blended out a little too much. So with the E43, I felt like I did blend out just a tiny bit too much. Plus I wanted to darken some of those areas that would naturally be darker, like where the leg is bent forward and down next to where quote unquote the ground would be. If it gets to be a little too much detail, you can always then go back. I'm gonna go back with E43, and I know that's kind of hard to see, I'm sorry. Um, and E44 and E43, and just kind of blend out again a little bit to mute that just a tiny bit. But you can start to see the fur really take shape. 
I like this technique whether I'm doing no line coloring or not. I love it either way. So it definitely um, is something you can do whether you have a black outline or you want to do the no line coloring here. One thing about the no line coloring, I'm a little bit more particular, I suppose I would say, about those deeper, darker areas because you're losing the stamp line essentially with the no line coloring. I'm gonna do the front leg now. We're just gonna do small little strokes down and up. Having that outline there also kind of helps disguise um, any of the messiness of the little strokes, I guess I would say. And then we're gonna go back in with E44. I used E47 first. And then we'll finish with E43. These images are so super cute. And while I am doing the mammoths, this can be used for pretty much any critter or color combination that you are wanting to do, no matter what kind of card it is. This also works really well for hair on people images, so kind of the same basic idea. I'm gonna carefully just go in and color in the insides of the ears with R00. We're gonna do that for both the big and the small mammoth. And then they all have tusks and I'm gonna to want to make sure that I color those with my lightest colors, which I'm using E40 and E43. So I will be uh, making sure and adding that here in a minute as well. I noticed the last time I colored a mammoth image that I accidentally colored over one of them because you start to kind of lose your place a little bit. So I wanna go ahead and, or I do, maybe not everyone does. It depends how little they are. The tusks on the littlest ones are pretty little. But just kind of get that color laid down and in place so that I have that there and then I can always kind of outline it so that it stands out. I did shade the tusks with a bit of E43 and I'm doing traditional blending here. I'm not doing the feathering technique. I'll go over those again closer to the end of coloring just to make sure that they have the shading I want. So the ear really ha is blending into the body a little bit. So I'm gonna take my darkest markers or marker, that's E49, and kind of add a little bit more of that definition in and shading so that it's a little bit more prominent. And then again, just taking our darkest marker and adding in some of those little outline areas before I fill them in with the feathering technique. I was trying to figure out exactly where I wanted to go. I find it best when doing this to just take my time. Coloring is generally the thing that does take the longest when creating a card with an image that needs coloring. And I guess this is gonna give you guys a pretty good idea of how long it takes me to color. This was a little more time consuming than some, I will say that. I really wanted to make sure that I hopefully gave you guys a good example of this particular coloring technique, or at least how I do this coloring technique. I know there's so many ways out there. And then I need to figure out the way I want the hair to fall. And so this was what took me maybe the longest is on the face itself, just trying to get that the way I want it to go. So let's go ahead and outline it, kind of get that hair texture along the edge. And also kind of outline the 
tusk a little bit. And then I don't know if I want to do my darkest feathering with that E49. I think I'll probably do E47. I'm going to add just a little bit thicker, darker line where the small mammoth is laying on the large one. And I did pull down just a few little lines here. I don't want to do too many. until I'm sure how I want this to look. This is the E47 and I'm just kind of very, very lightly and gently pulling up small little lines. And I am sorry, this is a little hard to see here. Maybe I'll move the paper. I think it would be a little easier to come in from the side. So the head is pretty important. I want to make sure I use a fairly light hand when adding those little feathering strokes here. Just kind of make sure that we get a nice gradient of color. You do lose the eye detail, but you would lose that even if you were maybe blending the whole image out as well. So I always like to reference the stamp set and when we're done coloring this in, we can add the eye back in with a black fine tip pen. Here's the E43, which is our lightest color. And to get the blending just right, we're probably going to have to go back over this with one of our darker colors as well. Just maybe in a few little areas, we're going to add a little more definition in with E49. Kind of blend into the ear just a tiny bit. I don't. I like the pink for the ear insides of the ears, but I don't like it to be so pink. Um, even though it is a very light pink, so I'll generally go over that with like E40 or E43 or both, just a tiny bit to give it a little bit more of a muted look. And then of course the trunk. We're gonna do the same thing that we did for the rest of the head. And then maybe pull in just a little bit more dark. I think it's a little too light. And then there is the other foot laying there, just a teeny tiny little area underneath that tusk that we'll need to fill in as well. I tend to take Quite a bit of time when coloring this in. Let's go ahead and add that eye and instantly the face is so much cuter. I'm gonna add just a little bit more of that texture right around the tusk. The actual image actually has a little bit more texture there so I went ahead and pulled that a little bit further or a little bit more. Add a little texture just to that little area so it matches. And then for the bottom of the foot I opted to just do the E40 and E43. We're going to color that in with E40 first and then blend in a little bit of E43. just to give it a little bit of shading. We can go back over that edge with E40 to blend it back out. Once we have that colored in, I think we're about ready to color in the little guy. Again, gonna start with my darkest marker and outline a bit of this. 
Let's go ahead and add E40 to the tusks. And then we're just gonna kind of give it a little outline, again, kind of jaggedy. I try to use a pretty light hand here to represent that fur. Kind of go around the trunk and up the other side of the head. Outline around the ear using a very, very light hand. And then let's go ahead and take our darker markers and start adding in the fur texture. So E47 first, we're just kind of pulling very light, small strokes up. And then we're gonna do the same thing, coming down the back of the mammoth. And then we're going to do that on either side of the front leg. We're gonna pull a little more out with E44. I think, I guess I did the rest of the body here first. We're just gonna pull that color out a little bit more and then we'll go in with E43, which is our lightest color. Gives us that nice highlight and lighter areas of the fur. And we're just gonna pull that out. We may have to go over this one a couple of times too, just to get that the way we want it to look. And then we're gonna just do little small strokes on that front leg, as I was saying a second ago, coming in from either side, really um, just like the larger one. And then the same thing with the head. We kinda wanna make sure we get the hair falling down the front of the head and then kind of coming up is how I did it. and then leaving a nice little highlight. And we'll draw the eye back in here in a second. I always think it looks so bad before it looks better. There's hope because the big one looks good. Let's go in with our lightest color just going to fill in a little bit. I'm using the feathering strokes, but I'm also doing a little bit more blending. Then we'll just kind of feather that down. And we're going to need to fix some of this because there's a pretty big difference in the color. Really need that E44 as the mid-tone to blend it all out nice. This is one of my favorite color combinations for fur of many different critters, um, anything in this range. I don't always use all of these, but I do really, really like this. They're some of my most often used. I know you guys ask a lot about often used Copic marker colors. In the brown family, this is one I use a lot for fur. So anything, the E40, 43, 44, 47, and 49. I'm going back in now and kind of just going over the face area. So remember earlier I was saying with the Copic markers, one of the best things is if you blend out too much or you're not super happy with it, it's always good to err on the side of caution and go lighter because you can go back in and add additional darker colors and really uh, blend that out again and build up the color until you get it the way you want it to look. So it looks pretty terrible actually right now, but we're gonna blend over everything with E43. Kind of get rid of a few of those harsh lines. Even though we have that fur and I love how it looks, there's a couple areas that are just a little too harsh. And that looks so much better. And then we'll add in an eye and it's gonna get even better. I did add some little eyelashes. Those are not in the actual stamped image. Those are just something I added later. So we'll just take, I think I took a number three tip Tombow pen and I am going to take like a number one, I think, and just draw in some very, very faint eyelashes. And then I'm adding up that E40 and or 43 over parts of the ear 
as well. Kind of maybe go over the tusks one more time. Any little fixes, this is where you're going to want to do that. So I'm adding just a few additional shading touches. Checking to make sure I like how everything looks before I take that coordinating die and die cut this. So I did a simple um, masked, inked, and stenciled background with a nice large sentiment to finish this off. All of the supplies that I did use to do the finished card will be listed in the supply list below. I didn't um, include that in the video today, as I mentioned, since this is a pretty lengthy video. I know I called it quick tip. This was not a quick tip. I'm sorry, you guys. Um, but the coloring does tend to be a little bit longer. I guess maybe I should have just said a feature since this is more of a, a technique and not just the whole card creation. Anyway, I hope this has given you a good idea of how maybe to add some feathering to fur on your critters. If there are any other kinds of videos like this that you would like to see, please drop me a note down below in the comments. I do read them all. I do try to get um, questions answered and get, respond to all of them. I'm a little behind. I'm still working on that. Last week was a little crazy, but I am working on it. So definitely let me know if there's anything in particular, especially something maybe that I've done in a video that you would like a little bit more in depth um, and more in real time. Since this was in real time, I know the, the request was to show this in real time. And so I hope this has given you a good idea of this technique. Thank you guys so much for joining me today for this Copic coloring video featuring coloring in mammoth fur with Copic markers. The supplies I used to color in this image and finish the card are linked below the video here on YouTube. Here is another video featuring the Mammoth Love Mama Elephant stamp set that you might be interested in. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and be sure to subscribe to my channel and hit that notification bell so you never miss a new card making video. Thank you guys so much for joining me today and we'll see you next time.